Hello everyone. After much anticipation, I have officially added a mini milling machine to the shop. This video is the unboxing, testing, and review of the new mini mill. Before looking at the machine itself, it came with a little toolbox full of stuff that I need to check out. With everything laid out, it seems to have come with a pretty decent variety of tools related to this machine. And in addition to the tools, some hardware in regards to the chuck, the various handles for the machine, a bunch of Allen wrenches, some T-slot hardware for the table, the manual and a spare fuse, and finally a really cheap oiler. The first thing to do is put on all the handles. As a note, don't take the indicator collar off this handle because there's a small spring underneath that goes flying if you do. I'm not sure if I broke this cap just now or if it was already broken, but either way, it's broken. This is also where the spindle can be rotated to put the locking pin in. With the spindle locked, the chuck can be inserted into the spindle and then tightened using the bolt from the top. To turn this mill on, it seems that you have to have the dial turned all the way to the slowest or off position before pushing the green on button. After that combination of events has taken place, the dial can be increased to start the mill and vary the speed.
With that figured out, I decided to throw a cheap vise on and give it a try. I'll be using a 3 8 inch 4 flute end mill bit from a set I picked up a while ago for doing some milling work on the lathe. They will also be linked in the description if you're interested. I'm going to be testing this mill on a piece of 2 half inch aluminum round stock. While the surface finish isn't perfect, I think it's a lot better than I can achieve doing this operation with any other method that I have access to and could always be finished to remove the machining marks. I'm also pretty new to milling, so if anyone has any suggestions on things I could do or tools I could use to achieve a better finish, please leave a comment below. That said, I can't complain too much and I'm really quite pleased with how it turned out. I also picked up a double sided edge and center finder for the mill and figured I'd test it out as well. If you're interested, it will also be linked in the description. From what I understand, as you approach the edge, the wobble is supposed to smooth out until you go just a little bit too far, which will cause the probe to be pushed off center. The idea is that you adjust until the probe stops wobbling, and then you know that the center of the tool is two tenths of an inch away from the edge of the part. It's pretty low tech but seems to work well and was cheap enough that I'm sure it will be worth having around. In regards to some various things I noticed about the mill, the hand cranks have very little backlash in them and the operation is very smooth. The indicator on the cross table is a nice way to see low tolerance measurements. While the slides can probably be adjusted slightly tighter to remove any minor looseness, overall they seem like they will be very accurate in both directions. Both the X and Y axis also have simple locks to improve the rigidity and persistence if that axis isn't being used for a particular operation. The truck that was included has a nice feel to it and a smooth operation. Although when turned on the collar has a wobble to it, it doesn't seem to affect the rest of the truck and the collar is large enough to grab onto and quickly close the jaws.
There is also a functional z-axis adjustable stop. and a debatably accurate angle indicator for the tool. This mill does have a two-speed transmission, but I'm not sure if the gears are plastic or metal. The depth crank has quite a bit of backlash and is probably only accurate in one consistent direction. Also, while it has a measurement indicator on it, there isn't a reference point, and I'm not sure why it spins on the handle other than to maybe zero it out. In order for the high accuracy depth handle to affect the height of the tool, the low accuracy crank needs to be locked in place. Finally, the angle of the tool can be adjusted using the included 36mm wrench on the nut on the back of the mill. Other considerations include the missing mounting bolt from shipping, but at least the other three held, the bellows to keep the chips out of the inner workings aren't very impressively attached. And there are some obvious touch-ups in the paint. The included toolbox will be helpful to organize things like the shorter bolt for mounting things in the spindle, the handful of Allen wrenches, the cheapest possible oiler, and the various wrenches that were included in this set. Also, the end mill bits, and whatever other accessories I get. That's pretty much it for this review, and I am overall pretty impressed at the initial quality of this machine. It appears to be much more functional out of the box than the equivalent mini lathe, and I'm looking forward to really being able to expand on the projects I can work on. I hope this review was useful, and if anyone has any suggestions for different tools or accessories that I might need or find helpful, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you have any cool project ideas or other things you'd like to see me try to make, leave the suggestions in the comments as well. Be sure to hit that thumbs up if you liked this review. Check the description for links to the tools and the mill. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe if you aren't already so you don't miss any of the cool new stuff I can make now that I have the capabilities of a mini mill as well as a mini lathe.